Father God, you are our personal God. Jesus, you are our personal Jesus, Holy Spirit. You are our personal Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Ruach HaKadosh. We thank you for this day. I thank you for another Father's Day, Father. Uh, You are the first father. You are the creator of all fathers. You're the creator of all things. And for that, we are thankful. We're praying for a special blessing on fathers all around the world, Lord God, all around the world. And those who are spending time with their families, Father God, let them have a wonderful time. And we bind every evil thing that tries to come up against their relationship with their friends and their family. May they have a wonderful day today. We are thankful for Father's Day. Hallelujah. Father God, Holy Spirit, Use me as I deliver this message today and let somebody get something out of it. You want to send hope to people, so use me. Use my mouth and my hands, my heart and my mind to give hope to those that need hope. Hallelujah. And those that you want to listen to this, cause them to come on, Father God, either now or later. The way you do, uh, you, I can't tell you how to do your business because you do it so well, you don't need any help. But we do thank you for the help that you give us. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name, we ask that you bless each and every prayer request that we receive, Father God. We give all the prayer requests to you. There are so many that we can't uh, possibly name them all at one time, but you heard them. You know what they are. I ask that you bless each and every household that's represented on this call right now today, Father God, in Jesus' name. And I ask that you give them more power, give them Show them that they have more power within them. Show them how to use the power that you've given them to step on a devil's neck. Hallelujah. Father God, to get it, to get victory over the enemy. And this is what we need in times like this. That the, devil knows his, the devil knows his time is short. And he's trying to do everything that he can to mess with your people. And we already got the victory in Christ Jesus. And we are accepting that. Hallelujah, and we receive it. So I cover this with the blood of Jesus and every person listening with your blood, your precious blood. In your holy name, Jesus, and amen. Amen. I'd like to start out by wishing you all, um, to wishing all of the fathers who are listening, okay, uh, either listening now or those that may come on later, as they sometimes do, and they read this uh, at RevEssie.com. And I'd like to say happy Father's Day to you. Hallelujah. And many more as well. Amen. I understand that this is your special day. And you should be showered with plenty of gifts from the heart. Not just gifts for the sake of giving because it's Father's Day, but because you deserve it. Amen. There are some men out there who make it hard for the good ones, just as in anything else, race, occupation, neighborhoods, governments. But there are good men out there, and we celebrate you today. Amen. God is good. God is a good God. And he never, he never lets his children down. If you emulate the first father, as I said, the creator of all things, you too will be a good father. How's that? Amen. Some haven't done this, and their children suffer for the wrong decisions. Man has been illegitimate since the very first time that he listened to what woman told him to do instead of consulting with God first or just simply trusting what God had told him previously what not to do. He listened to the createe instead of the creator, and the fall happened. And the children suffered right along with the parents, Cain and Abel, amen? The story of Cain and Abel. Cain had that evil speck within his heart, which brought on jealousy towards his brother Abel. And Cain killed Abel, although Abel had done the right thing. This proves to us even today that Christians ought to walk a straight and narrow path at all times and stay under the feathers of the Lord's wings because we're not exempt from harm, folks. And just because you're Christian doesn't mean you're exempt from harm. And jealousy is a horrible disease, a dis ease. Amen. Not only can it kill the body, but can also kill relationships with other people. Jealousy is a separator. Satan is a separator. There are many relationships that have been severed due to jealousy. Be careful of who you listen to. Amen. Be careful of who you whisper to and who whispers to you. Person A can whisper a little tip, quote unquote, to person B about person C. 
And person B will miss their blessings from God by listening to person A. Listen to the whispers of the Holy Spirit. Many men may not have close and open relationships with their children over jealousy. See? And maybe the new man in the mother's life is jealous of you or even the mother herself could be doing everything in her power to keep you from seeing your children. We're praying for you. And there are those who may have mistreated their ex at some point during the relationship, right? We don't know. And have since asked the Lord to forgive them, though, right? But the mother is still harboring that against them in her heart. And the children once again suffer. The children suffer. The grandparents suffer. And on down the line, unforgiveness and bitterness run rampant like poison. I myself have only seen my own grandson, my only grandson, actually, approximately four to five times since he was born seven years ago. And that was mostly everywhere except in my own home. I only saw him in my own home once when he was about two months old. When he did see me at the age of four, he grabbed my finger, took his mom's keys, and walked me to their car like a little gentleman so he could take me home. (laughs) I'll never, I will never forget that. He didn't even know me that well. We just had such a good time eating dinner at Eaton Park. We had so much fun together that he actually wanted to take me home. I cried. That was awesome. Happy tears. Amen. Sad to say, but to this day, he really doesn't even know exactly who I am or has ever addressed me as grandma or his aunt as Aunt Lexi. My son does everything in his power. Power to be a good dad. Everything that is illegal to be a good dad. Now, I didn't say that he's mistakeless, but he sure is a great father. His face lights up around that cute little man. What's funny is the fact that I, I see the little boy in my son when he's with his son. See, fathers, this is what you should do as well. Enjoy your children. You're not trying to be, don't try to be friends with them per se, okay? Just have a ball with them. Let the love and fun come out in you while they're with you. They'll remember you for that. And please, let them be themselves. They may not be what you expected, but they're yours. Amen. (laughs) Amen. You may not have turned out the way your parents expected either, right? Amen. It will also cause them to respect your corrections. Should you have to do so, just as we respect God when he corrects us. I know someone, okay, who was rejected by their father because they were gay. And the mannerism showed up when he was a little boy. The father wouldn't talk to him or go anywhere with him. And every time he saw him, he'd run the opposite way. He would run away so he wouldn't have to talk to a young man. He told everybody, the father, he told everybody in the town He kept telling everybody for years, that if isn't my son. You fill in the blanks. This is how he talked about him. It was horrible to watch, especially the people who laughed with him when he said it. Well, needless to say, the father passed early. True story. The father passed early, and the son is still here. See, the root of bitterness eats like cancer. He's gone through a lot of rejection in life and is struggling with his emotions to this day. He suffers from depression and is trying to get help, but he doesn't know where to turn. We've prayed for him and on him, but that rejection and depression keeps coming back. He wears it like a badge. It's sad. Aren't you glad that God isn't that type of father? He only disowns those who disown him. And if you want to write down Luke 13, Luke chapter 13, verses 24 to 28, read like this. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut the door, and ye begin to stand without and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall ye begin to say, we've eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou's taught in our streets. But I shall say, 
I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. You don't want that to happen. Amen. Stay in the presence of God. You don't want to be thrust out. You don't want to see all the good folks in heaven enjoying themselves and you can't get in. Now, as far as my grandson, I enjoy him from afar, such as Facebook videos and Instagram. Maybe some of you mothers and fathers as well um, who wish that they could only touch your children or hug them or give them a big kiss and some apple pie, right? (laughs) Just keep praying. Prayer works. God's in control. No matter what it looks like, God sees it. He's in control. He doesn't want his children to hurt. This is why we have to keep maintain our relationship with him. There may be someone who's telling the children, okay, you know, the devil is always at work. There may be somebody who's telling the children that you don't want to be with them or that you abandon them. Amen. But in Jesus' name, I decree and declare right now that one day soon that child will begin to ask for you and their grandparents, well, the ones who you know don't they don't know or are being kept away from, and they'll desire to be with you and get to know you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible. God is telling you to have patience, my son. Patience is a wondrous work. It brings much success to the believer. Amen. Never, don't ever rush anything. Wait on God. They that wait, the song says, "They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength." Amen. Wait on God. God is a restorer and a repair of the breach. He does it better than we do. Isaiah fifty-eight twelve says, "And they that." shall be of thee, shall build the old waste places that shall raise up the fountains of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. See, God is called the repairer. He repairs things. He doesn't tear down. Amen. That's for the enemy. That is not for us. His wrath. And and, and write down these scriptures if you want. Um, You'll love these promises of God. Malachi 4, 6. And it says, and he shall turn the, look, uh, before I read this, I want you all to know that no matter what you're going through with your families, God's in control, God's got it, and he's going to fix it for you. Amen? Malachi 4, 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. God is serious. God is a father. He loves his children. He wants his children to love him, and he wants you to experience it as well. That is your promise. And Malachi is considered as Old Testament, and some scholars say that it is actually the first book of the New Testament. We don't know that they're studying it, and that's what I've heard many times, that Malachi can be considered as the first book of the New Testament before the birth of Jesus. Amen? We don't know. You have to pray about it. Amen? And then Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 16 to 17 says, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, which is Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. See, even if your children are disobedient, okay, God is going to work it out. It says that he's going to turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. Amen? Acts 3, 20 and 21. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, uh, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. He's saying that Jesus was already preached unto you. We should know better. Amen. Accept him. Amen. Accept his ways. He is wisdom. He is knowledge. The first thing that Jesus did in Matthew 6, some of us know this as the Lord's Prayer. 
okay, when he was teaching us how to pray, the first thing he did was to include the Father. Amen? Good or bad, fathers should always be included. Any child is going to one day ask for them anyway. It's in our genes to want to do so. God made us that way. So, look, so many mothers are trying to keep their children away from the fathers. Talking trash about the father is not going to do any justice to the triune relationship. One day that child is going to want to get to know their father, even if they never ask you, ask the mothers about them. Guaranteed it crossed their minds a million times. If the father is bad, let the child figure that out for themselves. Trust me, I don't preach on what I don't know about of or have experienced. My words are genuine to you today. That's why I have refused some people on being an alcoholic or drug addict support system. I never had that problem. I wouldn't know how to handle it. I don't want to be a liar. If I can't do it, I'll let them know. All that I can do is pray for them and cast the devils out. If they don't believe that it's going to happen and let them come back, it's not my fault. I can't have faith for them. And it's, it's that way with all of us. We cannot have faith for somebody. You can pray on them all you want to. But if you can pray that somebody is healed. And if their faith doesn't tell them that they're healed, they don't have the faith to believe that they're healed, they're not going to receive that healing. Unless God creates a miracle. Amen? While praying, notice that Jesus didn't say, My Father who art in heaven. Even though he had said before, I and a Father are one at times. But this time he was teaching us how to pray, not what to say, but how to pray. He started it with our Father which art in heaven. He's including all believers in this prayer and telling us to include them as well. He's teaching us how not to be selfish in our prayers. The Bible asks, um, how can you love God and hate your neighbor, right? There are times when our prayer should literally be all-inclusive, Now, maybe not always, but most of the time, God trusts us with prayer. Amen? It is our communication with him. And then he goes on and says, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. He's giving God respect. He's giving his father respect and letting everybody who reads this generations later, like us right now, is letting us know that the creator is to be respected. To be hallowed is to be reverenced respected, worshipped, and adored. Amen. To the children of the Most High, God's name should be holy. Amen. His name should be holy to you and no, his last name is not damn. When we get that right, <clears throat> we've done very well. Even some movies are blocking out the God before the word damn comes out of the actor's mouth. God is going to get his respect. <laughs> Amen. And everyone in the entertainment business isn't going to hell either. There are many Christians who believe in the Lord there, so keep them in prayer. Have you ever seen an actor who seems to have gone missing out of the blue for years and later pops up in a Christian movie? Kudos to them. They most likely refuse to sell their soul. Put it this way, they wisely rejected those nasty private house parties at the rich and famous um, who have you get high and film you performing various sexual acts to hold over your head. Go to. That's why you see so many in the entertainment business seemingly going off on camera, waving umbrellas at reporters, running down a street naked, waving guns, shouting, they're trying to kill me, or pulled over by the police with their hair looking unkempt and crazy. Or they're rocking back and forth as in a trance at a game, passing out on stage or the sidewalk, and their so-called handlers have to grab them up and whisk them away. Another sign that one has wandered away is multiple tats. I think you heard me say this before. Uh, multiple tats. When a Christian entertainer goes from being meek and shy, proud of being Christian, okay, riddled with talent, when they go from that to urinating in a bucket in front of cameras with their bodies covered in horrible tattoos, they're gone. Pray for them when you see that pray. Then there are the ones who lose unexplainable amount of weight, okay? To the point of looking like a hellish skull and acting out of character, selling satanic clothes to kids. Come on, guys. You know, let me put it bluntly. God is not their father. 
Some come back from it, but I believe that all of that was required of in their contracts just so they can get more money and more fame, and they greedily fell for it. Satan tried it with Jesus, and Jesus is God. So you know that Satan is missing a few upstairs, right? Amen? Turn to or write John 8, 44. And this is what the Lord is telling people who will not follow him, and those that love the world better. He says, "Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Always inquire things with God. He loves you and wants you to trust him. Only the, only the creator of fathers knows how a good father should be. The devil's a copycat. Don't be one. He only made what God only made one you. Amen. Be your best self. Be the best father that you can be. Train your children how to be right. I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 11 to 18, and then chapter 5, verse 9. And verse 11, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 says, And that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. God, these are tips for men, you men out there that want to live a better life, that want to do right. Amen. Study to be quiet. And do your own business. And to work with your own hands. It's, look, stay in your own lane, fathers. Amen. Do what God has commanded you to do. Read the word and learn. You want to learn how to be a successful man? Read the directions that your father in heaven gave you from the start of mankind. Amen. Someone online asked the other day, ladies, what do you consider to be manly? And there were many answers, and you know, somebody said to empty the garbage, and somebody else said wash clothes, cut grass, whatever, wash dishes. And Well, to me, I think seeing a man read God's word is the most awesome thing in the world. Or to listen to God's word, amen? If he takes care of his business with our creator, I know that he's going to take care of me. Do your own business. Take care of your own household. Truth be told, look. Some men, I'm not happy saying this, but some men are allowing the manipulating spirit of Jezebel to take over their roles with their children. Due to the weakness that mothers have in their households by lacking that masculine presence, you need to go around more often. Amen? As much as you can and do as much as you can to help. Not lip service, not arguing, but help that household that you have created. Your presence is needed. And never stay away from your children over arguments. Do whatever you can legally, okay, to be with them whenever you can. Arguments ensue, and there we have another household that Satan has separated. See, this is how he works. He slick, undercurrent. He's all about strife and division anyway. And if the man of the household doesn't recognize a greater power than himself, the family suffers from such, such self-absorption, we'll call it. And no, sir, you are not God. Now, you are a creation of God. Lucifer once said that he'd be like the Most High, and he got to the curb so fast that people on earth saw him shooting out of heavens to earth, and they described it as lightning. I saw Satan as lightning hitting the earth. Satan was a bad angel. And speaking of bad, many children today are labeled as being bad. Notice I said labeled as being bad. The mother is tired from being overworked. She may not chastise the children the way that they need to be chastised, and they get an over storage of what I call extra energy. They can't go play baseball, basketball, cheerleading, football, camping, swimming. 
with the fathers who are, the, the fathers are now out working, sometimes double shifts because a woman is taking them to court for support. He never gets a break. Brothers out there listening to this, we know that some of you never get a break. And some of you as well never help out as much as you know that you can. The man never gets a break. He can never get ahead. And for those who say that they should have thought about that while they were having sex, I say it takes two to tangle. Women okay the act when they're raptured, when they're caught up in a relationship, and then blame the man if he leaves after the pregnancy occurs, and the woman's no longer seemingly caught up. What happened to the rapture and you were just so in love? The romance instantly stops. Where did the interest go? Was it love or was it lust? Don't get me wrong. There are some out there who are just disrespectful and ignorant, but they don't stand in the gap for all men. And today, some men are almost homeless while their exes are allowing strange men to move into their households. Look, what I'm about to say may seem strong, but it is the truth, so forgive me if it steps on anybody's toes. It's turning out that many of those men are perverts, taking advantage of the children, male and female. Ladies, here is an awesome tip for you. Don't let your little girls run around naked around your boyfriends. And don't let them give the children a bath either. Be responsible. Your boyfriend should never babysit your ex's children. They look at that child's face, and they see the father on it, and and it's on after that. All they see when they look at the child is the father, the man that was there before them, which they may even wonder what your relationship was like with them. They may physically harm that child on purpose just to get back at the father. It's a sickness. It's sent by Satan. It's straight from hell. It is devilish revenge. Slow down on those relationships. Give your body time to heal from the last one. It's that green-eyed demon, once again, jealousy, as I was talking about earlier. Old folks, you know, old folks had a saying. They used to say, use your noggin for more than a hat rack. Have any of you ever heard that one? Amen. There are so many stories out there in the news about this. You know, once recently, not too long ago, A couple of years ago, I believe, a man put another man's baby in the microwave and turned it on because the baby wouldn't stop crying. And the baby baby wouldn't stop crying, and it was ruining his high. Get this. He's watching the woman's child. He's getting high. The baby won't stop crying, so he puts him in a microwave and turns it on. And yes, the child died. Mothers today are out working, and their new man is living in another man's home, eating the children's food stamps. And they may not even be working. Uh Uh-oh, free babysitter. Now, of course, this is not all cases, okay, but it surely is growing. Now, I don't expect to win any Grammys or Emmys for what I'm about to say, what I'm saying now, in fact, and I certainly don't expect to win over uh, many friends, but the truth has to be told. The truth has to be told. Sooner or later, Christians, we have to grow up and we have to to, um, start telling the truth of God without worrying about what man thinks. I am through about what man thinks. I don't care anymore. As long as I please God, I'm cool. The truth has to be told. I'm like a bull in a china shop with truth. People have actually come to me or called me for help with something, and they said, forgive me, Reverend Essie, but I came to you last because I knew you was going to tell the truth. <laughs> because the truth is sometimes scary. Some people, some people can't take the truth, amen? Some of these worn-out parents take their so-called bad children to the doctors. The doctor gives badness a title, and they get paid for it. And many don't even have to work anymore because they live off of the child's money. They're getting paid for having a house of disrespect and chaos. A house under slack hand will not stand. You may have heard me say this before. I think I preached it on uh, Father's Day. I get some of my notes uh, from sometimes from other sermons I've done in Father's Day 2017. I think I told this story. My daughter and I went to Walmart once. 
I stayed in the car. She stood in line at the customer service center for over an hour. I, I wondered what was happening, right? She came to the car and she said, Mom, you won't believe this. But a lady in front of me cashed Social Security checks for all eight of her children. <laughs> she got thousands of dollars and stuffed it in her purse. See, in Pennsylvania, you get approximately uh, $700 per person, and that's a lot of money. I was shocked. Half of those children are probably not bad. Most likely, they need a father figure in the home to show them the serious and corrective side of a home. And that is missing. A le- uh, today, that's missing. Okay? And, and, and but we, uh, we understand that sometimes there just could be a miswiring in the brain. We understand that, okay? Everything's not spiritual. Things are physical. But it does start in a spirit, though. I will say that. You know, but can't God handle that, too? Amen. Fathers, please don't let the doctors raise your child. And no, mothers, you are not the father, too. Give him his day. Look, mothers have their day. Give fathers their day. Eve never claimed to be strong as Adam. In fact, the Bible calls us the weaker of the two. Um, A lot of ladies don't like. Turn to 1 Peter 3, 7. (coughs) Amen. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. As unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You know, and and I'm gonna say something else too. It's a little uh, nerve shattering to some people, but this women's movement it bit off more than it can chew. I have to say that <clears throat> this woman's movement bit off more than it can chew. Yes, sometimes women are strong, but not as strong as the devil makes them think. And then they get older and they begin to have inner problems, bone problems, arthritis. And, 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 and they go through things that they should never, never have gone through because they took, they did too much. And it's harder on the health system now that I'm thinking about it. Amen? I myself have always been a tomboy. I was a tomboy from the time I was a little girl. But I never wanted to be a man, and neither have I ever tried. Okay? Take that to the bank. I enjoy being a woman. Yes, my voice is low. I cut grass and move furniture. I'm a woman. (laughs) Amen? Amen? But I can hit the high keys when I sing. Amen? The holy order of a household is God, Jesus, man, family, and then work or etc. I'm a very strong woman. I'm a black woman in America, a Marine, a preacher, and a mother of two beautiful children. And yes, I'm a strong woman, but don't you know, I'll accept a handsome, smart, God-fearing man in a heartbeat if and when God sends me one. <laughs> And also, men, you are only to have one wife, one girlfriend at a time. Amen. If God wanted men to have more than one, he wouldn't have given Eve one rib. He wouldn't have given Eve one rib. He would have gave her the whole slab. Amen. The whole rack. (laughs) I would love to give you some tips, fellas, on these last days. And I'll be taking them from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 12 says that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. Share. Help others. Amen. Is your cup running over? Share with someone else if you're blessed to do so. The more you give, the more you get blessed. It really works. The more you give, the more you get. It really works. Amen. I've been doing this lately, and it's, it just feels wonderful. God will never let you run out. Verse 13. But I would have you, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. God does not want you to sorrow like those who have no hope. For those who are grieving, 
God's telling you not to over grieve. I had some people get mad at me about this, but it's in the Word. First Thessalonians four thirteen. Grieving is natural. It's a natural process. But don't act like you no longer have hope. We always have hope in Jesus. I have such high respect for the mothers that lost children, but still they smile when you see them and they still quote the Bible, you know, because they have hope in God. They know they're going to see those children again. Amen? Don't grieve to the point of lifelong depression. First Peter tells us, count it all joy. I believe it's First Peter, count it all joy. Don't get into the manipulation of people's feelings. You know, some people sorrow, they cry to the point of manipulating others. That's how they get their way. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep, all, some of, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Did, did you get that? Jesus, the people who passed on, Jesus is going to bring them with him when he comes to get us. Concentrate, men, on Jesus' return. It is our only hope. Man keeps trying to take our attention away with junk. Don't trust the junk, okay? The dead with Jesus will return with him. God is in control. Guess who's coming back? Ha <laughs> amen. Guess who's coming back? And they can't stop him either. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. That means we will not precede those who are asleep. Your loved ones who are asleep, passed on, will see Jesus before we do. They'll be with him when he comes to get us. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Tells you right there, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Things are about to get really loud, folks. See, the dead have seniority. The dead in Christ have seniority. They will be there, your mom, your dad, your child, your aunt, uncle, sister, brother, friend. We all have a cloud of witnesses who see what we're going through. You are not alone. God sees it all. That is your hope. God sees all that you're going through, whether or not you can see him. You can't see air either, but it's there. Amen. And verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Caught up, rapture, as I said earlier, rapture, caught up with Jesus in the air, quickly taken. Rapture itself is not in the Bible, but that's what the Greek and Hebrew word in the Bible means. It means to be caught up. Amen. The word ekaton which means ecstasy. And no, I'm not talking about the drug. Amen. The drug got it, probably got its name from the experience that you have when you take it. You're caught up in it. Anita Baker has a song called Rapture, where she says she's caught up in the rapture of her lover's love. We will all go, and it's going to be the first time that we darken the sinner's doorstep, so to speak. They think they're darkening ours, but one day we'll darken theirs. It's going to be an eclipse. With all of the saints rising. Can you see all the saints rising? It, it's going to be dark underneath. And we are going to be on top. Amen. And we're going to be smiling. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 4.18. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I mean, start preaching and teaching others about this chapter. First Thessalonians 4. People need to know that their loved ones are coming back. Folks need to hear this. That's good news. Amen. And then I'll read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, which says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. I know, I know we have pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, high-trib, low-trib, and I don't know-trib, right? But we make things too complicated. Salvation means save. Wrath means God being upset with the world, his extreme anger. God's wrath is a horrible thing, and I don't want to see it. 
His wrath is not for the saints. Isn't that good news? Some will be martyrs for Christ, but it's not for the saints. If you think the bad news, you think we're going through bad news now, the world hasn't seen God's wrath yet, and guess what? We won't see it. They've seen his grace, and will soon see his anger if they don't repent. He's a great father. He has exempted you from his wrath. Can you do that for your children as well? No matter how angry or upset you may be at the mother, can you forgive, please, for your own health, for your own peace? Can you forget the bad and just enjoy your seed? Amen? You planted them. Enjoy them. Look in the mirror and you'll see your kids. They didn't ask to be here, right? But God blessed you to have them. And the Bible says, blessed is a man that has a quiver full of them. They were created in your image. Love them, forgive them, accept them, enjoy them. Amen? Genesis 126 and says, let us make God, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. See, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then Genesis 128 says, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Look, Armageddon is coming, but it is not for you. Have no fear. Don't let the devil speak any fear into your entire system or existence. Yeshua Hamashiach is here. Amen. Are you saved? Now's the time to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. I pray that all of you listening to this are saved. If you're not, okay, you need to get saved. Right now's the time. With all that's going on around the world, you need a friend. I always tell people that you need, and Jesus can be that unique friend if you allow him into your life. He's your helper, and his Holy Spirit is your comforter. If you're not saved, just repeat the Romans road after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of my sin. I'm so sorry, Lord. I believe that you died on the cross and rose three days later from the dead just for me. And I accept what you've done. I accept you as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, and amen. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. Now go find a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church and learn of him. It's never too late. Your new life starts now. All old things are gone away. God throws them as far as the east is from the west. Now go live, go laugh, and go love those beautiful children that you've created. Amen. The blessings that God has given you. Show them the love that you have in you. The Lord blessed you and keeps you and makes his face to shine upon you and is gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Learn of him. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming on today. And I pray that your week goes by victoriously. Go out there and eat a good meal, or if someone brings you a meal, whatever you do, enjoy this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Reverend Essie signing off. Have a beautiful day.